I've been wanting to make a wind harp that's for the window. I found this kind of rough diagram online, modify it just very slightly. And so I'm using, I just went to lows. I got quarter inch thick instead of eighth. So it's a little stronger than, than that. And so for this part, I'm doing 2.5 inches cuts. It's kind of what the wood pieces were from the store. Less trimming. It's 1.5, 1, 2.5. And then I'm doing just five inches just to make it easier. So that's what the different pieces. So this is, I believe maple plywood. So this is cut to 30 inches and then five inches wide. Let me move you over here. And then here is the one and a half inch. And you have to cut it just a little bit less than 30 inches. So it would be here. I'll put, I'll put more of the actual, actual dimensions in the description so you can just kind of print them out. So this is the two and a half inch. I believe. Yeah. This is the two and a half inch. And then from here, these are the sides. So we're, we're looking at this. This is the side piece. So this goes two and a half. So it's, this part's going to be sitting inside the box. And this goes down to the one and a half inch for this side. And then for the actual, so this is oak to screw it into. So I haven't gotten to this part yet, but I'll probably put this. here or something and then the bridge I want to make sure you have a sharp point so this is just some molding which is like that but I just gonna flip it upside down so it has a sharp edge for the strings to rest on so to kind of loosely put this together just tape it so here's all the different pieces. And I also taped it so I knew all the pieces fit together well. So when I got to the gluing part, I didn't have to stop. Any wood glue will work. Uh, this one was, I think, Gorilla Glue. And I only had four clamps. Ideally, you would have more, but I clamped each of the corners and then taped down any gaps that I saw where it wasn't completely touching and left that overnight. And it was very solid the next day, so I was thinking of using screws, but the first time I screwed into it, it started cracking so it's a little too thin to use screws and I measured the center for the sounding port or hole just kind of drilled it out and used a small saw to cut through it and sanded it with a file and that 
worked pretty well. And then this part is for the tuning pins and the screws to have something hard to hold on to. So you need this. I had to actually sand the edges of the, the hardwood a little bit, kind of at an angle because it was a little too wide. So here's where I'm at. So I've glued the top on. Like I said, I'm not a woodworker, so this is more for function over form, but I tried to sand it so this would not have as much of a gap. I'll probably put some wood filler in and sand it so it's not as dramatic looking. I probably didn't need to, but I put screws in here because underneath, underneath this is the, there's a hardwood. Let me grab that. So underneath these screws is a block oak hardwood underneath this. So the tuning pins have something hard to tension off of. So that's what these little, I think they're called zither pins or tuning pins. But it's got a hole. for the string to go into and nice threads. And I got this off Amazon. I'll, it's only $10 for 16 of these. And it comes with a little tuning wrench, which is awesome because when I built my first metal harp, I used bi scripts, which worked, but this got pretty munched. So this is definitely, this tool is definitely worth it because you use it pretty often just to kind of tighten things up over time. So what I'm going to do next is I made just a little template to space these out. So the last one's going to be right here, about there. So the bit that you want to use for this is 3 16 When I tested that, I took it all already, but I tested it on this and it holds the tension very well. So I will drill these holes. I just drill them all the way through and then I'll kind of mirror the, the holes on this side using the same cardboard template. And then on this side, I'll just use nails and just kind of nail them in at an angle and they'll just loop around it. And then this side will be the tensioning side and then I'll put some bridges here. I'm not sure how high I'll need them until I get some strings on here. At least one to kind of see how high it needs to be. If what I got is high enough, if not, I'll get something else. But that's how it's looking. It's pretty stable. So I've drilled my holes for the pins. So there's going to be 12 in total. So I have so I can get the alignment right on the other side. I put some string just kind of temporarily and then just kind of slightly tensioned it and lined it up with my template. So this side I'll just put nails in. And I think that should be pretty good. So I just decided to test putting a nail in this hardwood oak and I had to hit it so hard. I'm kind of worried about this becoming unglued underneath. I want to have a really good connection, even though it is screwed. So I'm actually going to do these small screws. So 
So these are just little guys. It's not going to hold a lot of tension, but I'm just going to screw it up to the point where it's kind of smooth at the top of the of the screw. Might give me some playroom, so put these in. So I noticed as I was turning these tuning pins and with the screws too, but they've cooled down. But the center is kind of where I finished off. I checked this right after with this, but I was still on time lapse, so I missed that. But it was about 149 in the middle of the last couple of screws that I did. And the outer edge ones. That's kind of where I was alternating from top to bottom to help not get the wood too hot. Not kind of interesting. Okay, so I'm just stringing this up. I got this coated in rose oil. Let's use a bigger thread. This is just fishing line. I don't know what weight this is. How you I tie this. So this is the end piece. So you wrap it around your peg or my screw in this case. So here's the end. You're gonna wrap around so these two. Here's the end. Just gonna go through this loop that you just created three times. I'm just gonna pull. Just hold on to the part that's cut and just pull with the longer piece. And you'll notice it will kind of cinch up on itself. Let's give it a good tug on the part that you're keeping. And that's good enough. And then you just trim off the end piece, just leave like a um, quarter inch or something. And then for the other side, I'm still kind of Making sure all these are nice and snug. So give yourself like nine inches or something extra to see have room to tune it. Depending if your string is smaller, you may have to tighten it more. And it's really worth getting one of these. So I make sure this hole, basically the threads on the actual tuning pin are pretty much hidden below the wood. It's kind of what I go for. So.
put it through. Pull it tight, and then I go. So all these I'm going to be turning clockwise. So I go underneath the string. And just kind of pull it tight backwards. And kind of brace it against these other tuning pig tuning pins. So I'm working on this one. So I just start turning. <coughs> like quarter turns at a time and just kind of test it off and on. Not tight at all yet. The thicker screen um, fishing line tightens up a little bit quicker. So I'm doing some lighter weight some thinner just to kind of give variety in the, the tones that come out. So you can tune it. Uh, I never have on any of the wind harps I've built. Just and I kind of pluck it towards the center and that's not tight enough. You want a good clear sound to come out of it. It's getting better. And it is very easy to over tighten these. For some reason, you let go of this string and this feels loose. You just unwind it and try it again to make sure it's being pinned when you turn it. That's basically what's holding it in place. So that's pretty close. And the strings will stretch after you've tightened them, so you may have to come back and kind of do these again. So that's why these are kind of long. I'll probably leave them like this for another day or so and just make sure these aren't touching like the main wires that are under tension so that's probably good enough for this beautiful so here's my finished twin harp it's a little rough but it does work i'll post a link to the hour recording I have of this. So I last left you with tightening these. What I've done since then is when I took it out I noticed it didn't really sound well unless you had feet on it. And the feet are off center because this whole bottom piece is kind of warped probably because I didn't cut it right because I don't, was doing it with hand tools like jigsaws and stuff so I'm probably a little off versus like a table saw where it would be true cuts. So, let me take this off for you. So I decided to put some screws here that will kind of act as dowels. I didn't want to put big holes in here. What I would do differently the next time is I would have this width of wood on the edge. So, I've, so I can actually put a dowel in there and have it be kind of separate from the sounding chamber. And then I'll probably still do thin wood for the front side, bottom and top. The top you could do thinner as well to kind of save on wood cost. And then I would kind of do a dowel instead of a screw. 
just so it looks nicer. Let's see, what else have I done? Actually, I kind of put some spacers, just some little cork sticky pads just to kind of make this sit level and you can see how off it really is, but the sound of it sounds really good. So this is just some um, core around baseboard, just kind of flipped on that corner. So that's holding the tension. So that, it's working well. I haven't had much wind in my window since I built this. But taking it out to the canyon at night where the wind comes out every evening, it's really quite nice. I've had, When I did that recording, I was actually holding it upright because that was before I put these little nail-in feet. I noticed when this was totally flat, like the sound wouldn't come through the harp at all, so it needs to be elevated just a little bit. Just enough to kind of separate it and give us some space to sound. So that's kind of how it's looking. So that's how it sits. So what I found, so it kind of goes, this is the thinner side and it goes up. This is about an inch and a half and it goes to two and a half to the top. So you kind of create like a funnel effect here to guide the wind in. It needs, the wind needs to be about, I would say 10 miles an hour, eight to 12, something like that. It's a pretty steady wind for it to start to pick up and start to vibrate the strings. But it's really quite a magical experience when you hear it for the first time, actually, especially after you spend all this time making it. So I'm trying to think what else I would change. You know, I definitely want to borrow like some table saws and so I can get proper cuts. Cause like I said, I did this with a jigsaw and not the best for straight cuts. So definitely some flaws in this, but it does work. But I'm really quite happy with it. This is a lot more secure now. So I'm anxious to take it out tonight and test it flat like this to make sure it works this way. And now I know how that goes. I woke up this morning to a nice windstorm. Here it is in the window with the feet on, so it has a nice gap underneath so the sound can come through. And I was woken up to this beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. 